first time I posted a video of Marin Robu, the Moldovan 81, back in February of 2020, I knew people were going to comment on this technique. Asymmetrical, clunky, far removed from the textbook image of a perfect technical model. His movement was unlike anything else. I met him at the end of January in 2020 at the Roma World Cup, before most people in the weightlifting community knew much about him. And that first video I posted of him snatching 152 kilos in the 73 kilo category garnered over 191,000 views on the Weightlifting House Instagram account, which is way up there for us, particularly two years ago. And to put that into perspective, Lash's performance from the same competition garnered fewer views and likes than Marin Robo. I think the reason Marin garners so much attention is because his technique musters significant interest from people on both sides of the technique aisle. He's more than just slightly different, he moves really quite differently to the norm. So much so that it rallies the, if it's not textbook he should drop down to the PVC pipe troops, enough to in turn bring out of retirement due to the sheer frustration at the idiocy of the camp, the there is no perfect technique and if it works it works camp. But the thing with Marin is that he has more of a physical obstruction that limits the dorsiflexion, that is the ability to push his knee forward over his toes, on his right side. Pushing your knees far forward is extremely healthy in lifting, not only allowing you to squat deeply, but also it reduces the flexibility requirements of the hips and allows you to find a stretch reflex in the quads to come up out of the hole with. But it isn't necessary. While most elite weightlifters opt for this style of depth, there are those, people like Jonathan Rivas for example, who favours a deeper and more acute hip position than a knee forward position. And this too is fine. It's when one side does one thing and the other does something else that potentially can cause problems. The right knee can't push particularly far forward while the left can which causes a pretty major hip shift and twist, loading one side more than the other. And it's at that point that a lot of people then spot the obvious visual asymmetry and say that there's a problem. But that's not necessarily true. It's incredible the low tolerance that can be gained by gradual exposure to a stressor, especially if it is repetitive and similar, which a sport-specific movement like a snatch or clean is. Though to the outsider it may look like this technique is going to cause a lot of injury, and no doubt there will be people who have read a few too many SNC for beginners books who will regardless comment below saying that he needs to sort things out. But it's amazing how little problems this has caused him. Could he lift more if he had no physical obstruction on his right side? Yes, quite possibly, but the time spent trying to change such ingrained motor patterns would require such a reduction in exposure to sport-specific tasks that his ability to compete would reduce significantly. Like a single all rower who overdevelops their erectors on one side, or a violinist whose internal rotation on the bow arm is extremely high. Sure, you could make an effort to correct, and I hate even using the term correct as it kind of inadvertently suggests a current fault, a supposed imbalance, but the effort to change would massively reduce the advantage that the athlete, in this case Marin Robu, has physically. Marin is also well aware of this. On that first post of mine showing off his form, people commented things like, good luck with your knees in the future, and this guy needs Kelly Starrett's supple leopard, which by the way is a comment so cliche it verges on parody. And Marin Robu commented on the post saying, thanks for the comments, but this is my technique. It's his technique, and it works well for him. He stretches anterior tibialis at the start of his workouts on his right side, he wears a knee sleeve and wrist straps on his left, and just lifts. A week after this training session that you're watching now, he snatched more than any other 81 kilo weightlifter at the World Championships, taking the gold medal in that lift with 168 kilos. After a competition record clean and jerk at 195 kilos, he was able to take the bronze medal at the competition. As one of the physically weakest in the lineup in terms of his squat and deadlift, Marin outsnatched the rest of the pack. So something's working, that's for sure.
On top of all of this, and as a random aside, Marin Robu is a really nice guy. He's great fun to film also. And if you're currently not following him, I suggest that you do. And if you want a pair of the house straps, the ones that Marin Robu chose in this video, you can grab them at weightliftinghouse.com along with all other accessories. It's worth mentioning that all product sales at weightliftinghouse.com go right back into creating content and traveling to various competitions. Also, the one day international coaches only conference is March 20th. Learn from Latvian, German, Cuban, and Spanish coaches. The links are all down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe.